I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I 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 need it! Now all what's left is some arid land and mud puddle. We enter our fourth year of drought here in California. They're pumping so much of it so fast that the ground in some areas is literally sinking. Flint's tap water was laced with dangerous levels of lead. Scooping out buckets of rationed water has become a way of life for people in some of the poorest areas of Mexico City. Normally I would be completely underwater standing here. After three years of drought, a metropolitan area of nearly four million faces tough choices. A severe drought into most of western Massachusetts. Massachusetts is currently in a drought. Camden, Hampshire and Franklin counties in severe drought. The UMass Amherst campus has more than 28,000 enrolled students. It's more than twice as many people in my hometown of Cromwell, Connecticut. UMass is ranked number 29 in the U.S. News and World Report ranking of top public universities. Its operations contributed $2.1 billion to the Massachusetts economy in 2015, and the school has been ranked number one in college dining for the last two years. While rankings and achievements are something any university should be proud of, there's one number UMass is probably not that proud of. 350 million gallons. UMass uses 350 million gallons of water every year. To give you an idea, that is just about 530 Olympic-sized swimming pools, or 22,580,645 kegs. While it is not that serious of a number, it is something to be conscious of. Shiny bright smiles! Whoa! Ooh, take it away, Kathy! So much fun, I hate to stop. But while I'm brushing my teeth and having so much fun, I never let the water run. No, I never let the water run. Let's think about what influences that number. There are good habits that can save water. On top of not letting the water run, there's peeing in the shower. I'm peeing in the shower which is more efficient than flushing a toilet that's probably filled with too much water anyway. Students like taking long showers. Welcome to New York we all have bad habits. At the dining hall, filling two cups of water so you don't have to get up for a second glass technically wastes water because it's an extra cup to be clean. So that means it's the same thing for dishes and utensils. The average toilet flushes two gallons of water. A five minute shower uses 12 gallons of water and one load of laundry uses 15 to 50 gallons of water. By the way, this film is not me telling you how to live your life. I'd be a hypocrite, but it is important to be conscious of your actions. If you care about the world, you'll do the right thing. I'm sitting on goose poop. A pretty big effort by the campus so far has been the completion of the central heating plant in 2009. The $133 million plant was part of the campus's effort to progress towards more efficient sources of energy. The plant has reduced campus emissions by about 75%, provides electricity for 70% of campus, and provides 100% of the steam needed for heating and cooling for buildings on campus. It does this by using the recycled wastewater from the Amherst Water Treatment Plant to produce steam and hot water for the campus. This outsourcing of wastewater helped reduce water usage by 17%. It's projects like these that show UMass is working to do its part in relieving water stress that's usually caused by its students. But still, UMass has its own bad habits. When it comes to conserving a resource, you need consistency. One major lack of consistency on the UMass campus is water technology. Southwest is the most densely populated part of campus. It uses the most water, but it has stuff like this. And this goes for other buildings on campus too. Newer buildings have great water tech when it's actually working. 
Yes, UMass does have refillable water stations all over campus, but they still sell their own branded plastic water bottles. A big part to students acknowledging their use of water lies in UMass's values regarding water. Students are about to come back to campus, but the drought is forcing colleges and universities to cut down on water use. Since the drought in 2016, UMass has launched what seems on paper, literally, a water conservation movement. Paper signs are posted in bathrooms across campus to promote conservation of water with the hashtag UMassSavesH2O. There's even the option to print these signs on your own, of course, for a small charge. But I don't see many signs in bathrooms for instructions on how to report a leak. Oh wait, here, I found one in the seventh floor of Herder Hall in the men's bathroom. If anyone decides to use this bathroom, they will be educated. Are these signs even enough? Well, I don't think so. Students don't care because for most people, they don't see the big picture of something like a sign in a bathroom. In 1972, a book based off a computer simulation ran by a team of 17 researchers at MIT called Limits to Growth was published. Sometime after the year 2000, this computer study foresees calamity. Resources drop more steeply, and food and production follow suit. Population continues to expand for perhaps one more generation, then collapses calamitously as deprivation takes hold. Of the many graphs and statistics that the report produced, one explains the simple answer. The human perspective graph. This space first time graph shows us the majority of humans are only concerned with things regarding their friends and family in a short period of time, while much less people tend to look much farther into their lifetime, their children's lifetime, and beyond. Well, my name is Robert Ryan. I'm the department chair and a professor in landscape architecture and regional planning here at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Yes, yeah, so I think there's often a disconnect um, because we turn on the tap and out comes the water. And so a lot of people aren't aware of where that water comes from, where is the water source. Amherst relies on several surrounding reservoirs and wells in the area for 90% of its water. 41% of that water is used by Hampshire College, Amherst College, and UMass. Often people think of landscape architects as simply uh, you know, doing small garden design, but in fact, we often deal with larger scale sort of systems, you know, towns, regions, as well as site scale. Part of Dr. Ryan's research has been investigating residential landscaping and if people would be interested in integrating conservation practices in their yards. Well, our focus was residential landscaping because in some places residential landscaping uses over half the water that's used or even more. Obviously behavior change is where we need to go because uh, if people are cognizant of it, they're going to use less water inherently, right? They're going to use less water inherently uh, and turn that tap off. My name is Masoud Hashemi. Um, I am extension professor with the Stockbridge School of Agriculture. My job as extension professor is that working with, uh, with farmers to advocate, to, to do research in the first place, to do research and also to advocate for uh, some best management practices in order to conserve water, to conserve more water in the soil and therefore uh, to improve the yield and quality of their crops. Professor Hashemi's research is saving water and maintaining local farming in dry regions that are subject to drought conditions with a no-till farming system. The no-till is basically uh, is that we do not disturb the soil, uh, we compact the soil less, and because of that uh, we have more water infiltration rather than runoff. The no-till um, leaves some residues of the previous crops on the soil and therefore we have less uh, evaporation of water from the soil. And finally, the no-till system is, doesn't disturb the biological life, uh, including microbes and worms and other uh, organisms in the soil. The work of these professors is greatly impacting the water conservation movement. These guys are the ones who are the distant dots in the human perspective graph. They understand the urgency to this issue. Unfortunately, it's just difficult to relate their studies to college students. It seems it would take the water shutting off before anyone seems to actually care. Another dry day means we get further away from catching up to normal rainfall. With less than 20 inches of rain in the lower Pioneer Valley all year, when we should have had more than 25 inches, our rainfall deficit keeps growing. On August 19, 2016, the town of Amherst imposed a water ban in response to an extended period of dry weather and a multi-year drought. Beginning next week, town officials will shut off the Atkins Reservoir to conserve. Here's a video of the Atkins Reservoir during the drought. The drought basically only prohibited using your outdoor hose. This doesn't pertain to college students either. They don't have garden hoses, they have a keg ho 
you get the point. There was never any real consequences for anyone. The water never actually turned off. But let me tell you about a time in 1980. The Amherst drought of 1980 lives in infamy. Just a day after their arrival, students had used over 4.5 million gallons of water. After widespread closings of taps and dorms across campus, students began to experience some actual repercussions. As a controversial decision, Chancellor Henry Koffler closed the campus on Thursday, September 4th. A mass effort to bust the 14,000 students out of Amherst began as an operation described by Koffler as just like moving an army. The story would make national headlines across the country. Campus would reopen that Monday and the drought of 1980 would become a part of UMass's history. While the drought in 2016 was not as bad as 1980, the consequences of 1980 may have seemed minuscule compared to other environmental emergencies. The idea that it can happen should be concerning enough. If students aren't conscious of their water consumption, they could be putting the entire town at risk. And by the current trend, it only seems this will be realized once it already happens. A wake-up call for other cities around the world. Again, climate change, changing uh, extremes of flooding and drought, population growth, uh, income inequality. These are, these are all factors that we have to include in our water resources management, and if we don't, then the, the threats, the potential for day zeros uh, around the world uh, is really heightened. As students, we must be proactive and not reactive, just as we should with any political or social issue. Water may seem like an infinite resource, but that simply is not the case. Look at the issues in Flint, Michigan, which had one of the worst water crises in the United States history. From 2011 to early 2017, California experienced one of its worst droughts on record. From 2006 to 2009, Syria experienced an extreme drought, mostly influenced by climate change. Researchers say it led to the start of the Syrian conflict in 2011 due to misguided water use policies and crop failure. These factors led to the migration of 1.5 million people to urban areas. Water is a major crisis. It is globally. Uh, considered as a major crisis. In 2008, Barcelona had to import water by ship from France. Mexico City only has running water for part of the day. Sao Paulo, Brazil is having one of the worst droughts in 84 years. Australia, northern China, India, all are going dry. In these cases, there is a common trend of population growth and economic growth. We know if you have large population and limited water resources, that eventually it hits a tipping point. And if conservation measures don't keep up with that, or there's a drought situation that's extended period that's beyond sort of the planning horizon for the, the sort of water agency, that's when you run to these, these sort of situations. And so it makes us, you know, have to try to catch up as humans. However, the undeniable role of climate change has been most influential. As our atmosphere warms, droughts will become more frequent and last longer. While Massachusetts may not be one of these places, it will be one day if these trends continue. Most recently in Cape Town, South Africa, one of Africa's wealthiest cities housing 4 million people could become the world's first major city to run out of water. In July of 2018, all taps will close on a day marked as Day Zero. If our water runs out and we reach Day Zero, on this day, the majority of taps throughout the city will be turned off. This is not a joke. Like any resource, there are limits. We have seen wars fought over fuel, minerals, and other resources of extreme demand. A war over water would be catastrophic. The two professors who have been doing their part said it best. I would say for those that are interested in, in sort of water conservation to kind of look at it as a larger kind of holistic approach. It should be a holistic um, approach. A holistic approach. Landscape architects, farmers, town residents, legislators, college students. We need everyone. World Resource Institute projects water stress will only worsen in the next few decades if nothing changes. By 2050, 70% of the world will live in cities. UMass is basically a small city. Beginning to truly understand our water consumption now will prepare us and our generations to come for a potential crisis. Water is not infinite. But hey, these are just a few thoughts and concerns I've had.